Hi guys, thank you so much for being here, and I really do hope you're doing well. Um, I'm going to talk to you about my obsession, one of my obsessions, um, which until recently was permanent camps. And a permanent camp is essentially you, you find a spot in nature that you really like, and you build sort of essentially a, a permanent shelter there, uh, may, that may be permanent, a permanent over cover, a permanent, a permanent roof, um, a permanent raised bed, reflective walls for your fire and, and things like that so that you can just rock up and get straight into the camp. Of course there are there are many famous YouTubers that have, have made permanent camps. We've got Mike MCQ Bushcraft, um, Lily from um, uh, Survival Lily uh, and th there's other guys, I, I won't mention them all, um, but essentially it got me really wanting to have one of these camps. I thought it would be really cool to just rock up somewhere, not have to carry all of your kit with you, just minimal kit. Um, to actually build the structure itself is a good skill set to have. To um, to have a spot to call your own, kind of, was, was also a nice thing to, th to think about and, and, and to want. The problems I've had, I actually tried to set up a permanent camp um, with Outdoor Life of Brian probably a year or so ago and that, that didn't ever sort of pan out. Um, a few other um, permissions that I managed to get from farmers to use their woodland didn't pan out either unfortunately for me. Um, one of those in particular, I started setting up the camp, I started clearing the area, I started making structures and realised that the guy was letting people dog walk through the woodland anyway, so it became a moot point. Um, the The chances are that if you find a, a landowner willing to give you permission to use his land or her land, they're probably going to be letting other people use it as well. It's very rare that you, you'll find someone that will so, give you sole permission to use sort of their own land that they own, uh, in my experience anyway. So... I've not had much luck with finding or making a permanent camp. Um, I've even tried to make permanent camps in areas where, um, uh, d deeply forest areas, we're talking like in Wales um, and places like that, where you can just walk and walk and walk and not see another person. I made a camp. I started making a camp. I, I got a, a, a shelter. I got a raised bed, a partially raised bed. And I was going to keep working away at that area and making a lovely camp. Unfortunately, two weeks later when I went back, someone had found the camp, someone had destroyed the camp, or what was what was sort of started off as the camp. Um, and I, I just kind of realised that it, it doesn't matter where you set up, people are probably going to find the camp. Um, and if they're young, they might destroy it. If they don't want it on the land, they will destroy it. And that's a lot of hard work. I mean, making these camps isn't an easy task. It takes time, it takes effort. Um, and that essentially gets wasted. Of course, you learn the skill. That doesn't get wasted. That stays with you. But it's a lot of effort to put into something that really isn't necessary. Of course, there are other issues to think about, like destroying green wood, to uh, fresh wood, to essentially build something you don't need to build. We don't need to build these permanent shelters. They're fun to do. They're, they're great to watch. And no doubt it would have made a great YouTube series for me to, to make a permanent structure. The, the problem, as, as my wife so rightly put it, is that you don't need to do it because you've got a shelter that you take everywhere with you, a tarpaulin. You've got bedding that you take with you. You've got a fire that you can make a portable fire, a bush box for example, you can huddle around and get very warm off that. It's its own inbuilt reflector, it's a box. You know, all the things that I was striving to make in a permanent camp, they were things I didn't actually need. With the added downside of the permanent camp being permanent, I mean, the one thing that you think, that's what I want, this one place to call my own in nature to go to, to enjoy. That, by defining it as that, imprisons you within that definition and do you know what I've grown out of the idea of needing a permanent camp I feel really free I can rock up with a tarpaulin with my sleep system whether it be a hammock or ground dwelling system and I can just literally 
choose anywhere that I want and enjoy different spots, enjoy, enjoy different vistas, enjoy different experiences. Whereas with the permanent camp, especially if you want to keep it a bit more covert, you have to hide it away. You might not get the best sunset. You might not get a, an open vista of the sky to enjoy the stars. There's lots of things that you miss out on. So I've gone full sort of 180 where from, from, from the point of really wanting this permanent camp to really thinking I don't need a permanent camp and I really, really love not having a permanent campsite that I have to worry about, that I have to put time and effort into that could get destroyed. It, it's like a revolution in my mind. Um, I thought I'd share that with you because I, I'm sure there are other people out there. When I've mentioned permanent camps to other people before, they get excited. It's a fun, exciting prospect to think about. And I thought I'd share this just to give you some thinking points. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a permanent camp. You might really want that and that might be what you really want to do. And that's great if you want to do that and more power to you. But the thing is, I want you to consider the points that I've mentioned in this video. Is it something that you really want? Do you want to be tied to that location? What, how would you feel if someone discovers that location and destroys all of your hard work? Do you really need that location in and of itself? And do you want to essentially give up a nomadic way of enjoying nature to be a static kind of enjoyment of nature? And if you do like that static version, why not just pitch up your, your, your tarp, your tent, your grand dwelling situation? Why not, pit, why, why not put that up? in the same situation if you really like a situation without destroying the, the woodland around, without affecting potentially wildlife, why not do that? I'd like to know. Uh, let me know. Has this given you anything, any sort of thoughts and any, anything to ponder on? Do you think you're, you're going to change your perspective on making a permanent camp? Um, do you have any other points you'd like to make? Any, any good points for or against permanent camps? I'd love to know. Whatever you've got to say, drop a message in the comment section down there and you know I'm going to respond to you, so make sure you do it. Thanks very much, guys, and until the next video, take care. Bye-bye now.